And I believe the right thing to do is for the Senate to take up this nomination and to confirm the nominee before Election Day. We have a great deal at stake here. I think we should be very calm. We should be inspired by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was brilliant and she was strategic and she was successful. And she did more for equality for women in our country than anyone that you can name. The death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg sets up a tense political battle over who will replace her and when. We say good morning to Dr. Jeff Engel, director of the Center for Presidential History at SMU. Before we talk politics, let's talk about her impact and your observation on what she and the late Justice Thurgood Marshall had in common. Yeah, she really had an amazing legacy and an amazing life. And she and Justice Thurgood Marshall, who, of course, was the prime advocate and, and litigator for the Brown versus Board of Education case in 1954 that produced essentially equal desegregation of the schools. The two of them were essentially the only two civil rights equality advocates to come to the court in the entire 20th century. If you think about where they came from through their careers, they came from the side of trying to expand rights. And I think one can make the argument that uh, Ginsburg, Justice Ginsburg, did more for uh, equal rights in this country than any other woman uh, in American history. If you had a, a hall of fame of important legal contributors, uh, she's in the first row. Well, let's, uh, let's talk politics now because that's what they're doing in Washington and across the country. Uh, and whether the Senate should consider a nominee this close to the election, toss uh, history uh, out in this uh, political climate, but what is the history on this, on, on confirming, uh, even considering a, a new Supreme Court justice this late in the game of a president's four-year term? Yeah, this is a moment, I think, where conservatives need to ask themselves what being a conservative really means, because what Senator McConnell is doing really has no precedent in American history. There have been 16 different cases throughout our long history, going back to Justice Taney in the, in the early 1800s, when a Supreme Court opening has occurred during an election year. Uh, the only time that that was not filled before an election uh, and nominated and confirmed before an election was the last time uh, when, just, when um, Merrick Garland's uh, Barack Obama's pick was not even given a hearing by Senator McConnell and the and Senate Republicans because they argued that there should be no confirmations during a presidential election year, that the people should have a voice in choosing who is going to choose the next nominee. That was the first time it ever happened in American history. And now, of course, we have a second time. This is actually the second closest that a person has ever left a Supreme Court vacancy before an election. It's only 46 days. Uh, and and Senator McConnell is changing the rules, changing his own rules. So, uh, before he suggested that there should be no nomination and no confirmation before uh, a, a presidential election year, uh, during a presidential election year. And now he's saying that, well, that doesn't count if the president and the Senate are from the same party. Uh, so, you know, go back and look at his words. I would encourage people to see what the senator said back in 2016. And it's very clear that his rule was no votes right before an election. Right, right. The president noted, however, the Constitution says the president shall nominate with the advice and consent of the Senate. He says that's my job is to nominate somebody, so I am going to do it. Yeah, the president's absolutely right. That, that's the ironic thing, is that uh, Senator McConnell was doing something that was completely un precedented in American history back in 2016. So the question is, you know, if you put yourself sort of in a veil of ignorance, if you did not know if you were a Republican or a conservative, male or woman, black or white, and were just presented with the facts, you would have to say that uh, the Senate Republicans, at least, are arguing both sides of the case at this point. President Trump yep. is not only following his constitutional duty to nominate someone, but more importantly, it's really good politics. I mean, I think in a sense, we can look at this as sort of perhaps a saving grace for the President Trump's campaign. The poll numbers for him, again, if you believe poll numbers, the poll numbers for him were remarkably consistent, historically consistent. They really haven't changed for the last three, four months. Americans essentially have made up their mind, and the poll numbers suggest that President Trump was going down to a large defeat. Well, this changes everything. This is essentially, if you will, taking the huge snow globe that is the election and shaking it up. And we don't quite know where the pieces are going to fall. So I don't know whether this is going to be better or worse for President Trump. But I do know that this is essentially a shock to the campaign that his own elect re-election campaign desperately needed. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. It takes the, the American public's focus off of 
the coronavirus and puts it on issues like abortion. Dr. Jeff Engel, as always, thank you very much.